Today we're joined by John Claridge. Now John needs a little introduction. He's caught loads of big carp from a variety of different waters. But today we're going to concentrate on John's approach and the rig he used to catch the brute, an upper 40 pound mirror from a club lake in Berkshire. So tell us your thinking behind catching this particular fish, John. I know you put a lot of thought into it and a little bit about the rig that you used to catch it on. Yeah, sure Dave. Um, I been quite successful on this lake uh, using a pop-up rig fishing over firmer bottoms. Right. Um, but when I was fortunate enough to see the brute on the bank, uh, I did notice how black its mouth was. Um, sure sign of a silt feed. A yeah. lot of the other big fish uh, very similar. They had very black mouths. Uh, quite an underslung mouth. Um, and again, being an upper 40, quite a big mouth. Yeah, yeah. So I decided that a bottom bait might be the way to go, fishing like in the zone, yeah. tight in, on the silt as opposed to popped up above it. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted something with a bottom bait rig that would uh, obviously trip it up. Uh, so big mouth, so I've got a stiff section there by the hook, yeah. uh, sort of two and a half inches stiff rig bristle filament, and that's joined via an Albright knot to the two-tone hook link. Okay. So, so you've got a very stiff section. That, that the proper, you know, the idea behind that is to make it difficult to eject, isn't it? Yeah, very difficult to eject. Um, should it suck it in and go to spit it out, it's going to kick round in its mouth yeah. and, ca and catch. Um, but I did think the brute was more likely, f f you know, tight to the bottom. It's going to be just hoovering up mm -hmm. um, and obviously right in itself, going from bait to bait. So more likely that the rig would. Uh, pull back and with a, the silicon there on the on the bend of the hook and a soft hair yeah that should help pull the hook in and the putty acts as a dropper so so when when that when it drops out of the mouth it's almost pulling the hook down into the bottom lip that's right dave yeah obviously it covers it up the, the knot up yeah. so obviously makes it more streamlined but the main purpose of that putty i just show you as soon as that falls outside the lip it turns the hook yeah you can see every that's time. work every time yeah yeah now you've got a little bit of plastic corn on the hook bait, I see. Is, is that to help balance the hook or...? Yeah, d double folded really, the, the fact that it gives it a bit of buoyancy. Mm -hmm. um, but the main thing was for a visual sighter. Right. Um, so, you, so that hook bait's going to stand out and it seems quite often the case that amongst a group of, you know, a number of food baits, that little bit of um, visual attraction quite often be the first one to get picked up, can't it? Yeah, depending on the, the, the situation. Sometimes I was using quite a bit of bait, sometimes I, I wasn't using very much bait at all. But the, if I was using a lot of bait, at least it helped draw the attention to that hook bait. Yeah. So I can see you've connected the bristle filament to a couple of inches of strip two tone with the Albright knot. And then you've got three or four inches of coated two-tone braid. Tell us your thinking behind that, John, why you've got the strip section and then the coated section. Right, I wanted uh, a softer section here, uh, one that if I'm, as I said, I'm fishing into silt, yeah. so that can settle with, you know, should it the lead plug in at any point, that it's going to keep the, the putty, it's going to keep that all-important hook section flat on the bottom. Yeah. Um, should the fish pick it up and go to spit it out, it's got that pivot point yeah. on there with the braided section. This I've left coated, um, basically to stop tangles. Yeah, yeah, one, so it's, it's going to kick the rig, the bait away from the lead, yeah. so it's not all in a pile on top of the lead. And two, by tying it on with a large loop as well on the helicopter setup, you know, it's going to stop it's the tangle. Tangled, yeah, it? last thing when you're targeting big fish like that is to mm. wind in a, a heaped mess in the morning. And that strip section does prevent the rig from looping up. So like you say, if the, if the lead's plugged in the silt, and you, you had a completely stiff section there, it might possibly loop up. Loop up, yeah. Whereas with, with that um, sort of strip section there, you've got a nice soft hinge in the middle of the hook link. Exactly, yeah. It's going to ensure it's not going to loop up and help it lay out flat. Yeah, lay it flat, you know, obviously I don't want the fish yeah, to nice. detect that there's a rig there. And I say it all helps the mechanics of the rig being able, you know, that movement in the, in the middle of the rig. So that's the technical side covered, John. So sort of tell us how you got on when you started using the rig. Right, uh, yeah, after tying it up, I was that impressed with how it worked. Uh, I put it on a rod for the first time I went back and I only had a 24 hour session, mm. uh, fished over quite a bit of bait, so bottom bait, tipped off with a bit of corn because I was using quite a bit of bait just to bring a bit of attention to it, obviously not being there for too long a session. Yeah. Uh, first morning caught a fish called the toad, 27 pounds, uh, fish I hadn't caught before. So, so that was a good start. Eh? Yeah, yeah, obviously I'd caught a different sort of type of fishing on the pop-up rig, so one of the ones that caught, hopefully I thought the bottom bait might be the way yeah. to go. Uh, the next strip, um, I lost a fish on the first morning, I actually got caught around a buoy, so 
So nothing, nothing to do with the rig? No, nothing yeah. to do with the rig at all. Um, and then next morning, caught a fish called Cluster. I hadn't been out for over a year. That was 34.9, yeah, cracking fish, fish, that one. Yeah. So yeah, well, by that time I was sold on the rig. Yeah, um, all working. three rods, just had to find the brute really. Yeah. Um, about a month later, uh, I did manage to find the brute in a bay. It was with three other fish. They were cruising around in the bay, enjoying a bit of autumn sunshine. Yeah. Uh, up and down the tree all day just waiting for me opportunity to come. They finally drifted out, out of the bay a bit, um, which managed me to get a cast in, yeah. drop down to a two ounce lead, so not too much disturbance, yeah. and yeah. just literally put 15, 14 mil baits on the spot. I uh, put a two bait stringer onto the rig, a uh, bit of fake corn, a bit of a cider, yeah. and obviously helping a bit of buoyancy as well. Uh, got that all sorted by sort of tea time, eight o'clock next morning, absolutely ripping take and a manic fight. It took about 50 yards off me, mm. mental fight. Um, got it in the net and it was the one I wanted, so. Excellent. Absolutely nailed in the bottom lip. Well, I say bottom lip, it was about an inch, inch and a half inside the mouth. So rig had worked exactly how I wanted. Yeah. Obviously the hook had turned really well and got it. So it all worked well. Mm. And how, big, how, how big was it? Personal best mate, 48 pound tea. Brilliant. So there you go, you can see the rig works. Great big fish rig and did the trick. Excellent. Thanks for showing us that, John. No problem.